Hello and welcome to the program. World Refugee Day was on the 20th of June and for Sri Lankans it comes at an especially relevant point in time. The number of newly displaced people in the country is roughly about 300,000. But counting those displaced throughout the past 30 years of conflict, the figures soar to even more alarming heights. For now, however, the focus is concentrated on those displaced in the north, living under difficult conditions in massive temporary welfare camps. Our first story this week takes a look at the issues of access to these, in terms of the government's stringent policies on entry and also in terms of those who feel that wider access will be beneficial to the displaced. Several aspects of the plight of the Sri Lankan displaced have been issues of contention amongst numerous parties, be it local or international. One of these aspects is the problem of access to the camps, which has been limited to mostly government and military personnel ever since the war ended in the final weeks of May this year. The government's stance on restriction has been questioned by many, most recently by politicians from the opposition who claim that entry into camps is being given on a selective, discriminatory basis where parliamentarians are concerned. We tried to visit IDP camps, but we were blocked, citing security reasons. On the other hand, many other governmental parliamentarians and visiting dignitaries of the international community were taken by the government, permitted, allowed to visit IDP camps. We don't see why we are not allowed. We are not strangers. And nobody need to harbor any suspicion as if we have any hidden agenda. No. Our only agenda is Sri Lankan national agenda. We are parliamentarians elected by the public court. We need to visit the IDP camps and report back to the nation. This is our urge and movement towards transparency. Uh, nobody can deny the immense uh, sufferings uh, faced by the civilian population in the IDP camps. So we need to be there. The petition is being reviewed by the courts but an outcome has not yet been decided upon. In the meantime, the government holds that its actions are in the best interests of the displaced civilians in terms of preventing further threats of terrorism, distracting from resettlement efforts and, in this case, preventing these people from being exploited by those seeking political gain. I don't think we should actually allow these IDPs to become a political football if there is a clear uh, indication of things that would benefit them then I'm sure the government would have no problem. The same thing has applied to all the international agencies. We were told that, you know, you had to have unlimited access. And the government point was simply that he's not IDP tourism. Anyone who comes up with a clear program of assistance will certainly be allowed to go in and help, provided it's in accordance with government priorities and the welfare of the IDPs. Every win and everything. Those behind the petition are mainly concerned with why some politicians were given access while others were not. But the few who have visited the camps, like TNA parliamentarian Sivanathan Kishore, have their own critical views of conditions within the camps. Despite having pledged his support to the government, Kishore admits that there are still issues that need to be urgently handled to improve the lives of the displaced. I went on Thursday with my wife and visited all these five camps, right? The people is asking, please resettle us because we want to go to our home. That is the main thing they are asking. Getting them free meals or water is nothing going to do anything. We are suffering here yeah? because not an easy thing keeping 300,000 people and looking after them, uh, giving meals, nine lakhs meals per day and all are getting, not getting properly, not in time. They are doing, trying their best to do. But even though there is some shortcomings are there. 